and a Christian, and very interested in how we can build relationships between our faiths. So thank you, first of all. I'm struck throughout all of your presentation by the strong areas where we can stand side by side. I was very moved by your description of the highest form of spirituality, if I've understood it right, and you must correct me, the highest form of spirituality being a soul that is at rest and serves mm. others, looking outwards, always looking to serve. In St Matthew's Gospel, part of the scriptures that I, ch I cherish, Jesus speaks of judgment and tells a wonderful story, uh, um, an awesome story, of the king being brought before him, uh, different groups of people. Some go to righteousness and heaven and others uh, to damnation. And some are confused as to why they go to glory and heaven. And it's the answer the king gives to each is that they served him in serving the little ones of this life. We have so much there. Um, now a question. <laughs> what can we do as Christians and Muslims to promote a better understanding of the common ground and of this value of service? Very good question. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for your comments and, and encouragement. Um, and secondly, for Sister Mayor who had organized it and, and for yourself and, and all the people who are in charge here for, for uh, letting us come and, and address. There are many common grounds. All the religions will have more in common and the whole Quran says and to the Holy Prophet, he says, tell the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, uh, that come and sit together because we have many common grounds. We have Adam, we have Abraham, we have Moses, we have many common things. And the basic outline is the same in all religions, to be good. No religion promotes evil and oppression. So this is the most beautiful about all religions. Second most important thing is that all religions are now asking for peace. My encouragement on that would be, as a, as a Muslim, that the Qur'an says peace would be achieved if justice was to prevail. If people had justice, then they would be peaceful. And if they did not have justice, then they will not be peaceful. And I think if we can promote that, if I was not given the, my share and my right, then I may not have the control on my own self and I may go out to do some evil because my share wasn't given to me. My rights were not given to me. So the peace would not be. I think that's the highest uh, level of achievement if we can try and do that and establish as, as, as Christians and Muslims. Just the two religion, uh, just the two religions. Christianity has something like 1.8 billion um, followers and probably more. And there are more than 1.5 billion Muslims. So you can just imagine just the two make more than half the population of the world. Um, so if they were just to make you know, peace and justice, you would see huge change to the rest of the world. Um, uh, and I think that is the, the solution. Um, the peace would be achieved through justice. Number three, verse number sixty-one. Um, God says that uh, whoever still requires a proof from you um, 
on, on, on the wellness of God and say to them that we will uh, fast for three days uh, and then we will come to, to pray to God that whoever is truth will prevail them and, and leave the others to God. Uh, that is what, uh, it's, it's a long topic but briefly the, the Bible doesn't mention it because it happened after the, re the revelation of, of, of Bible. Uh, God had already revealed Bible or Torah and it happened after the revelation so he doesn't mention it. But the histories do mention it and that's where the Muslims and the Christians came together in 7th Hijra, 6th um, of the 7th Hijra. Questions, if I may. Okay. One more question after this, if there was any. Um, there are different stages of the spirit itself. The, the the time it was created, up to when it comes into uh, the womb, and then the the time it was in the womb, and then the second stage in this world, and the four stages in after death up to the day of judgment and the fifth stage is after the day of judgment now Barzakh is basically the fourth stage after this death after the death of this life up to the day of judgment on the day of judgment we will be given either the paradise or you know depending on our own doings we are given the, the hell or the, the heaven but before that what happens to the spirit does it end the holy prophet says that your grave can be the the, the grave itself can be uh, a garden from the gardens of the paradise and it can become a hole from the, the holes of the hellfire. You will see some result of your doings in the hereafter, straight after death up to the day of judgment. Number one. Number two, the questions were asked, is it fair from death to the day of judgment? Many people die at many different stages. So one may be punished for 2,000 years and one may be punished for uh, 10,000. What happens? So the Holy Prophet said there is no, uh, you know, the time limit only applies to this life and it doesn't apply to the hereafter. Eternity comes in the hereafter. So the, the, the soul and the spirit itself is for eternity. It is not for uh, uh, a limited abode. It is for eternity. So the hereafter itself, the spirit either goes through or, so the spirit goes through different stages of the doings that it has done in this world. Does that answer the question? So that is basically a simple outline. Bayna Huma Barzakh, the Quran has talked about it and there are more traditions on it. There are many, many books. If you want to read uh, The Journey of the Unseen uh, in English, that is a translation, uh, you'll probably find it on alislam.org. Uh, al with a hyphen, islam.org. Uh, 